Hi guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to put this kit together. So if you bought this kit, first thing you need to do is you need to wipe off all of the edges to get the laser marks off. Unfortunately, it's just the nature of the beast. And it should come off like that and then it'll dry. I'm using just a baby wipe, um, an unscented baby wipe to wipe it off. You can use a damp paper towel as long as it doesn't leave fuzzies behind, that's fine. Um, if you don't have a damp paper towel, you can use an old t-shirt or something that you're not going to use again. But see how it's got like the little laser marks in there? You just want to go ahead and go across it very lightly and then it'll pull all that off of there. Okay, and you just go across the whole thing very gently just like that. After that, then you want to go ahead and take your pieces out of the kit. In most cases, you won't have to sand them, but if you do, you want to use a 220 grit sandpaper and just do one little pass to get the burrs off. And that'll take care of it. Don't rub too hard when you're doing it because this is a printed wood pattern on MDF. Okay, when you get to the hangers, if you're having a hard time popping it out, just take a pair of tweezers or something and poke it down in there to loosen it up and it should fall right through. And then you can discard that piece of wood. On the face, you're going to pop out these little boxes, but be careful not to break the edge. Okay, it's going to be a very fine edge there. Be careful not to break that. These little boxes you can just throw away, or you can use them for little building blocks for your dollhouse. Now, I've given you extra hangers than what you need just in case you would you know accidentally push too hard or something and you end up breaking it trying to get it out that way you still have some they're very very thin so when you're taking out this centerpiece you need to be extra careful and if you want to sand them just do that very gently. Now, if you want to round out this edge, you can, but again, do it very, very gently because this is like super, super thin for that. Now, I will offer you to buy these hangers in acrylic, which are a little bit more durable, but in the kit, it comes with the wood. And that's just to make the kit more affordable to you guys. I figure if you want to have hangers that are a little bit more durable, you can always add those separately. All right, so once you have all the hangers separated, just go ahead and stick them on the side along with this little piece here. All right, next is the handles and then the spacer. The handles more than likely are just gonna fall out as soon as you lift it up, so be careful. You only need two of these. There are extra ones just in case you end up dropping one and can't find it or something because they're so small. Okay, this piece you don't need. That's just another framing thing, but I will show you how you can use it to your advantage. This is a little square tool. That's going to be your little helper while building this kit. These pieces here, these are your hinges. You would need four of them, okay? There are six just in case, again, in case you drop one. Because once you drop it, they're really hard to find because they're so small. So... These pieces here are going to be for your closet hanger. All right, so this is the part that goes to using this um, spacing. And then there's going to be two of these little dowels in there as well. They're going to go in here for that. Then you have your backboard and you have your front doors. 
on the doors, you should have those little blocks again. Poke them out. Normally it's not that hard. I picked it up off the laser and it ended up taking and falling around. So I just took an extra block and put in there that I had so you could see it. All right, and then this is gonna be your top. And these are the inside top and bottoms. And then this is again a spacer. Okay, to get started, you wanna take the sides and you wanna make sure you have the pattern on the outside. So I just kinda of do it like a book like this so that the pattern of this is on the inside so you're looking at it when you open it. If you really want that pattern on the outside and having everything inside looking like that, you can. I prefer to have that pattern on the inside so inside or outside on this piece is irrelevant um, for the pattern purposes I just like it that way all right so then you want to take this little tiny tool here this is going to be a spacing tool that's going to help you make these even that's going to be the very first part you're going to do you want to have one side and then the other side and then it kind of looks like a G. So you want the G part going down with a little round area. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this spacer and you're gonna make it completely even all the way around. You can use some crazy glue or you can use some wood glue max or some um, tight bond wood glue. Either way works. If you use the super glue the super glue will adhere very quickly so you need to keep that in mind okay now very gently move that away from there go to the other side and do the same exact thing only now you're going to use the other piece of wood very gently move it away so do not move it okay now what I like to do is I like to use this top and bottom piece that I have I like to use that as my spacer then I even this up And I put that right in there while holding it I move this piece away oh, it's slightly slid did you see that and slide that out of the way again put this piece here because you know it's going to be squared and then put this piece here now if you do not want to add a second rod in here you don't have to but this armoire is for a children's bedroom so I figured the clothes were shorter now you want to go ahead and let that dry and remember to keep them right and left or left and right it doesn't matter which way you have it as long as you have it now if you have it here this G is going to be facing at the front so keep that in mind when you slide your pole in it's going to slide in this way and down but if you have it over here you're going to have to slide it in from the back and in so if you want to see this edge here you want to have it on the left side if you don't mind seeing that then you have it on the right side this side is going to be easier to drop it in therefore I'm going to go with easy we're going to let that sit like that. We're going to move these two little dowels out of the way for the moment. Let that set up a bit. Then you have your top and bottom. And when you look at your top and bottom, they should be shorter than your side pieces. And that's because we're allowing for the inner piece width. Okay? And for this, I'm going to be using the Loctite Bond if I can get it to come out because I use like this all the time. And it um, dries up on me sometimes.
Now, take this here, slide them out of your way, and I'm gonna turn this around so you guys can see it. But you wanna make sure this is even here and here. Now, once you put this on here, it's gonna pretty much stick because this stuff is legit crazy when it comes to sticking to this type of wood. Okay, and that piece that I told you that you can save, go ahead and put that there like that. Now your square up tool, you wanna square that up while it's drying. This piece I just used to make sure it was even across there. Now you have that little spacer tool that I told you about or part. I'm gonna go ahead and put that on there. If this is your first time building a kit, I would suggest you use wood glue and wait in between for the drying process. Because if not, it's gonna stick and then you're not going to um, be able to get it off because when it comes off, it's just not gonna come off very evenly. And if that happens to you, that's okay. You can sand that off or take a little bit of water to it and it'll come off. It's just paper. Okay, so you put that there. Now for the next piece, I'm gonna go right there. Then we're gonna slide this down, being even with the side. Just like that. Make sure you keep it even. And then use your square up tool to make sure it's square while it's drying. Now at this point, I'm gonna take the crazy glue and I'm gonna let it drop right in here just a little bit. That may have been a little too much. See, I had to widen this hole because it was jammed, so that's the issue we're having with that. So I'm gonna dip that in there because I got too much in there. And I'm gonna take some off. And then I'm going to stick that one in there. And that one in there. So let that set up. While that's setting up, you can do a little bit of wood glue on the edge or you can do a little bit of crazy glue again if you're using crazy glue keep in mind it is going to set up super fast and there's no room for error so i would suggest if this is your first time doing kits and you're not very sure of how you're going to do it to use the wood glue and then just wait for the drying in between Now I did a little bit of both on that one because it's gonna allow me some play time. Now I'm pressing down on everything and I've got the top even. And it's gonna stick again, I'm sure, because we're on paper. Now when you see that it's like that and you have some glue left over in there you can take like a toothpick or a skewer or something and you can just kind of get in there and wipe that out of there a skewer works great because it allows you to have that point to get in that edge Okay. 
Now for this side, what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of wood glue. And a little bit of crazy glue. And if you do too much, just take your wipe and go back over it, but make sure you do it away from your item. Now, before you put it completely down and center it, you need to make sure you get these as close to accurate as you can inside of that. Once you do, then you can center it around and make it even. Pull your little dowels down and put them in place. You'll have to glue it afterwards if um, like this one must be a little bit warped. But there it is, that's the main frame of the dresser. Now for the next part, it's pretty easy. You're going to take the front and you're going to attach it. Again, I'm gonna do a little bit of wood glue and a little bit of this crazy glue. Then you want to take this and you want to even it at the bottom. Stand it up, hold it even on the sides to make sure that it doesn't fray away. And attach it. That crazy glue should be kicking in relatively quickly. see any glue like that you can just remove that with your skewer there's what it looks like as up to this point now the next part requires you to have a small drill or a small drill tool what I've done is I've taken the pen and I've stuck it in here this is just a stick pen I cut the end off which if you guys have not watched my channel for very long or you've never seen the video that I have, I use ordinary stick pens because they're a lot easier to manage. Take the stick pen, be very careful, and you clip off this end and then it leaves it flat like that and just clip it off on an angle and it gives you a drill bit the same size that you're gonna need for the stick pen okay now I'm gonna go ahead and cut this down about three quarters of an inch that way I have it now on my doors I'm going to go over just a tiny bit 
very gently. Do not force it. Let the drill do the work. And it should drill a hole in there just like that. If it's not quite deep enough, you can go back and do more. And what that's going to allow you to do is it's going to allow you to leave a hole for the hinge and then that pin will go right down inside that same hole. It'll fit down in there. One thing I will tell you is when you're going in the drill, you need to go in a little bit and come out, in a little bit and come out because it doesn't have the little spiral part that a normally drill belt would have. Um, so you have to allow that to release that sawdust, otherwise you'll split it. Now, the next step in this is to take your little hinges that we have here and your drill bit. One side of the hinge um, may be narrower than the other side because it's the back side but it doesn't really matter. Um, I prefer if it's narrower and some cut narrower and some don't. To put the narrower side on the top. Now, I'm just gonna push that in there. And what you wanna do, and this is completely up to you, um, but this is what I do. I just do a tiny bit of crazy glue on that end. Just there. Just to kind of hold it there a little bit better. I'm going to stick that right down in that same hole. If you can't get it to go in, just use the back end of your pliers and it'll go in. Now, on your dresser, you want to put a little bit of wood glue. Well, I'm going to wait to do that side because I haven't actually drilled the holes for that yet. Now, what you want to do is take these and you want to slide them right down in where you just put that wood glue. Now, push them down all the way. Some glue may come out the side. That's okay. Just wipe it off. Make sure you hold them even. Make sure that door is even with the edge here. That way you have it, because when it cuts, it does give you a little bit of play in there because it's cutting that edge off. But that's how you need to do that. Now, to repeat that process, do the same thing for this side. Now, while that's setting up, you're gonna turn your dresser over and then this is going to be the top. I'm going to put a little bit of crazy glue on the center so it has a little bit of a quick set. And then I'm going to put a little bit of wood glue around the edge. I'm going to even it up on both sides. 
just kind of eyeballing it with this piece right here making sure that it stays flat you can push down on it real hard to spread out that glue the back should be even and that's how that'll work now you have these little handles if you're going to paint the dresser paint it very light coats of paint on several layers and then install these handles if you're going to keep it this color you can install the handles now or if you're going to keep it this color and you want to paint the handles a different color you need to paint the handles first because otherwise it'll just be too hard and it'll be a mess waiting to happen so I'm going to go ahead and put a tiny bit of glue on here, just a little bit. Open the drawer or the door and press the handle flat on the inside. I'm actually going to use some wood glue because I don't like how that's holding. It's still holding. Okay, so and then that is the dresser. Now, if you want to have a decorative piece, I'm gonna lay it flat so that can dry. If you want to have a decorative piece on there, you can for the handle that would slide through here, but you need to split this. And how you're gonna split this is you're gonna take a box cutter that's pretty even, and you're gonna go just like that. And then you can slide that in your handle and just keep it from opening. It's kind of like a little old timey cabinet lock. The other thing you can do if you want, you could put it on the bottom as an extra decorative piece. That's it. And that's how you do this dresser. Now, I will post the link below for how you can get this kit. And um, like, subscribe, leave a question, suggestion, or comment below. There's lots more kits coming. But as you can see, it opens up and it closes. And you can put your hangers in here. And if you didn't break any of them, you should have more than enough for all your doll clothes.
All right, well, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a question, suggestion, or comment below if you have any ideas or if you would like to see me design something and turn it into a dollhouse um, piece of furniture with my laser. List it below or an image link to it or something in the comments, and I'll, you know, consider it. Again, hope this was helpful, and I hope you really enjoy it, and the link for the kit for this will be listed below. Thanks a lot.